Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Duncan Castle's claims that senior stars want Solskjaer sacked. Solskjaer is under serious pressure. Manchester United have only won one of their last six Premier League games. And Man United are currently sitting sixths in the Premier League. Manchester United have had back-to-back -back home defeats to Manchester City and Liverpool. Solskjaer is staying at Manchester United for now. He's expected to remain Manchester United manager after this international break. Earlier on this week, like I updated you, he said Solskjaer was waiting to be sacked after leaving Manchester. Because on Monday, Solskjaer flew back home to Norway with his family. If Manchester United decide to sack Solskjaer, they'll have to pay him seven and a half million because in the summer Solskjaer signed a new three-year contract and we made a mistake giving him that contract and a lot of Manchester United fans will agree with me on that aspect. Solskjaer should have been sacked after the 5-0 defeat to Liverpool. If we'd have sacked him after the 5-0 defeat to Liverpool, I can assure that Manchester United would have got Antonio Conte. After the disaster to Liverpool, he said that Solskjaer had been given three games to save his job. Only won one of them three games though, beat Tottenham 3-0, drew 2-2 against Atalanta. Ronaldo saved Solskjaer in that game and Manchester United lost 2-0 to Man City last weekend. After that game against Man City, Solskjaer did say that the Man City defeat was a big step backwards. And he also said that Man United were outclassed by Man City. If Solskjaer really cared about the club, he would resign, revert back to what I've said before. But obviously he's not going to resign. He refu refused to resign after the 5-0 defeat to Liverpool. Now as you all know, Brendan Rodgers is the favourite to replace Solskjaer at Manchester United. Man United are confident that Brendan Rodgers will be their next manager. The Manchester Evening News said not so long ago that Man United are ready to trigger Brendan Rodgers' contract clause if Solskjaer gets sacked. Apparently, Rodgers has verbally agreed to become Manchester United's new manager. But his preference would be to wait until next season because he's reluctant to leave Leicester midway through the season. You know, if Brendan Rodgers came to Manchester United, do you think he'd get us back to that level where we should be at? Do you think he'd suit the strappings of the club? Do you think he'd get the best out of these group of players? And would he be capable of winning trophies if he came to Manchester United? Brendan Rodgers is a far superior manager to Solskjaer. You've got to admire what Brendan Rodgers has done at Leicester so far. At Leicester, he's won the Community Shield and the FA Cup. He's been Leicester manager for almost three years. And he's got a contract with Leicester until 2025. Before, Rodgers has managed Celtic. 
He won a few trophies at Celtic. He enjoyed a few years with Celtic. Before, he's managed Liverpool. He enjoyed one good season with Liverpool. Nearly won the league with Liverpool. Before, he's managed Swansea. What? It's all right, that, isn't it? Yeah. Just read your reviews on it. I yeah. I said it's a really good seller. Yeah. What do you have to do in setting up your thing with it? I've already done it. It's better than other. All you have to do will log in, I've already done it. It's better than other tellies, that. That one years old, that we're going to go any time anyway. Yeah. You've only got about 10 years out of it. Yeah. Put me down. No, I'll swap it for mine. No. Sorry about that, I was just talking to Yad. Um, he's managed Swansea before, he did well with them. Managed Watford a long time ago, also managed Reading and managed Chelsea's youth a long time ago. There's been a lot of other managers on Manchester United's agenda. Zinedine Zidane, he's been linked with a managerial role at Man United. Apparently, he's not interested in the Manchester United job. Um, it said the other week, though, that Manchester United held talks with Zinedine Zidane. Uh, reports from Spain said the other week that Zidane rejected the Newcastle job as he's waiting for the Man United or France job. But Zidane is currently enjoying life away from football management. I think Zidane would be the man for Man United, you know. I think he would get us back to that level where we should be at and he would suit the strappings of the club. And I'm convinced he'd replicate what he did when he was at Real Madrid. You've got to admire what Zinedine Zidane did at Real Madrid. He won a lot of trophies, so reflecting on that, he's got a good pedigree behind him. It'd be good to see Zinedine Zidane come and experience the Premier League. Eric Ten Hag, he's also been mentioned as well. You've got to admire what he's done at Ajax. He's won a few trophies at Ajax and he's been Ajax manager for four years. Fabrizio Romano recently gave us an update on Eric Ten Hag. He said Manchester United turned down Eric Ten Hag. Apparently, Eric Ten Hag is reluctant to leave Ajax. Potocino, um has been spoken about a lot, but I've disregarded Potocino now because Potocino sees his long-term future at PSG. Uh, Ralph Ragnick, um, he's also been mentioned as well. Uh, there has been rumours of Ralph Ragnick possibly coming in as the interim manager until the end of the season. So there you go. But in regards to Solskjaer, I hope Manchester United don't have to stick with him until the rest of the season. But we may have to, because we're running out of time on finding a replacement for Solskjaer. Solskjaer's been given long enough at Manchester United. He's been Manchester United manager for almost three years. This season is Solskjaer's third full season as Man United manager. 
And I did say at the start of this season that this season was going to be massive for Solskjaer. But I just feel as though that the expectations are far too high for Solskjaer to exceed as Man United manager. I do think Solskjaer's in a position that he shouldn't be in and Solskjaer's certainly not capable of winning trophies as Man United manager. He's not yet won a trophy as Man United manager. We haven't won a trophy since 2017. Um, we all adore Solskjaer, reflecting on what he's done for the club, because at the end of the day, Solskjaer is a club legend. He endured 11 years as a player for Man United. He flourished under Sir Alex Ferguson's guidance. And Solskjaer had a proven pedigree when he was a player, because he won a lot of trophies um, as a player for Man United. But unfortunately, he has no proven pedigree as a manager. And that is a concern. Before Manchester United, Solskjaer was at Mulder. He enjoyed two spells at Mulder. He won a few Norwegian titles at Mulder and that, but they're not a big club. And before, he did manage Cardiff. And his record at Cardiff was absolutely disastrous. The reason he got sacked from Cardiff is because he got them relegated. But reflecting now on Solskjaer's been Manchester United manager, he has gained some managerial experience, but he's learned quite a few things on the job as well, but there's still plenty of things Solskjaer's got to learn because he's still a young coach. Reflecting on our poor performances, not all of the blame stems from Solskjaer. Yes, he's accountable for certain things, you know, all his tactics and team selections have been questioned, but there's also players that have to take responsibility for those poor performances. At this moment in time, the club from top to bottom is in a predicament, and the way we get out of this predicament is a change of manager, and we also need structural changes at the club as well. Manchester United should be doing far better than they are. Because Man United have got a very good squad. It's a title winning squad. So in reality Manchester United should be winning the Premier League this season. Or at least challenging for the league. Man United have not won the Premier League since 2013. Solskjaer did actually say at the start of this season that his ambition was to win the Premier League. Manchester United enjoyed a very good summer transfer window this year. You know, made four signings, spent £141 million, brought Heaton in on a free from Villa, brought Sancho in from Dortmund, brought Varane in from Real Madrid and we re-signed Cristiano Ronaldo after 12 years. Uh, the board <coughs> backed Solskjaer in the summer transfer window and they still continue to back him now. The Glazers are backing him, Ed Woodward's backing him, John Murtaugh's backed him and Darren Fletcher's backed him. Solskjaer's enjoyed like five transfer windows now as permanent Manchester United manager. So there you go. Solskjaer has... Ran out of excuses. He ran out of excuses a while ago. Uh, Solskjaer got appointed in in December 2018 to replace Mourinho. He's been permanent Manchester United manager since March 2019. The club decided to give him the job on a permanent basis back in March 2019, reflecting how well he did as the interim manager. Solskjaer knew when he'd taken over at Manchester United, it was going to be a massive job. Not only that, a difficult job as well, despite him knowing the club through thick and thin. Ole is managing one of the biggest clubs in the world. But you know what? 
I expected Solskjaer to do a lot worse than he has done, so in that aspect, I am shocked. You know, Solskjaer is our fourth permanent manager since Ferguson because Manchester United have sat three managers since Ferguson, even though we are not really known as a sacking football club because we haven't got the structure to keep sacking managers. But anyway, the managers we sat since Ferguson, we sat Moyes, Van Gaal and Jose Mourinho. But Manchester United have got some really, really good players. But the reason we're not getting the best out of a lot of the players is because we're not playing as a team. We're a team of individuals, like a lot of pundits have spoke about. You've got the likes of City, Liverpool and Chelsea and that, that all play as a team. And that explains why they're in a much better position than Manchester United at this moment in time. If we played as a team, you know, we'd be up there competing with City, Liverpool and Chelsea and all of that. But look who we've got. You know, we've got the best player in the world overall in Cristiano Ronaldo. You know, Ronaldo is becoming infuriated with Manchester United. And he even mocked Solskjaer's tactics. In the 5 0 defeat to Liverpool. Uh, not so long ago, Ronaldo got named Player of the Month for October. Uh, so he's got back to back awards now because he got named Premier League Player of the Month back in September. Uh, Ronaldo has scored nine goals in all competitions so far since he re signed. But Man United are relying on Ronaldo far too much, you know. Ronaldo saved Solskjaer in the 2-2 draw against Atalanta because Ronaldo netted twice in stoppage time at the end of both halves. Um, he also scored the winner in the reverse fixture against Atalanta at Old Trafford. He scored the winner against Villarreal earlier on this season. He scored a very good volley in the 3-0 win against Tottenham. He also had a goal disallowed in that game. And he got an assist against Tottenham. That was his first assist since he re-signed for the club. Ronaldo played in the 2-0 defeat to City. He was anonymous in that game because he got very little service. He had two good chances though in the game. Um, if Solskjaer stays at Man United and obviously poor performances persist, I can't see Ronaldo seeing out his contract. Ronaldo's got a contract with Man United till 2023. There's an option of a further year. And Ronaldo receives £480,000 a week, so he's the highest earner at Man United at the moment. And he wears the number 7 shirt and we got him for £19.8 million with add-ons included. Ronaldo's won 32 major trophies in his playing career, including five Ballon d'Ors. And you've got Mason Greenwood, that's a talented player. You know, still young, got a lot of development in him. I can assure Greenwood's got a long-term future at Manchester United. Uh, Greenwood did play alongside Ronaldo against Man City. Uh, the Greenwood and Ronaldo partnership doesn't work out. Greenwood doesn't play um, up top a lot. You know, most of the time he plays on that right wing. That's where you get the best out of him. Yes, Greenwood's got four goals in the league so far this season. At one point, Greenwood did go a while without scoring, but... Despite that, I think he's been a revelation since he broke into our senior squad. Greenwood made his senior debut for United back in 2019. He's been a United player since the age of seven, so he's been part of the club for a long time. And last season, Greenwood signed a new four-year contract, reflecting on his good performances. Uh, Jaden Sancho, he's a good player overall. But he's been very, very poor so far for Manchester United. 
I think Sancho's totally blameless, though. I think Solskjaer's to blame for Sancho's poor performances because when Solskjaer decides to play him, <coughs> he persistently <coughs> plays him out of position. There again, though, there's quite a few games that Sancho doesn't even play in, but fans have been getting on Sancho's back. Does take some players' time to settle in, though. I said Sancho will do well at Man United, providing that he's used correctly. Uh, to Sancho's credit, he did well when he came on against City. He made an impact. You know, Man United got Sancho in a deal worth £78 million with add-ons included. And he's got a contract with Man United till June 2026 as an option of a further year. Marcus Rashford, he's also a good player as well. I think Rashford's done well in quite a few games since he's come back. But on the other side of things, there's been quite a few games where he's looked off the pace. Rashford's still young, he's got a lot of development in him. I can assure he's got a long-term future with Man United. Most of the time, Rashford plays on that left wing. We need to keep him on that left wing because that's where he's mostly effective. Uh, Rashford's been part of the club for a long time. He's been a United player since the age of seven and he's been in our senior squad since 2016. So he's been in our senior squad now for like five and a half years. And he's got a contract with Man United till 2023. Don't forget Rashford was out with a shoulder injury for a while. And at one point he had to have an operation on his shoulder. You've got Edison Cavani. That's also a good player as well. You know Cavani's hold up plays good. He creates very good chances. He scores good goals. I think his movement in and around the box is good. I don't want Cavani to leave, though, with the impact he's made since he's come in. Cavani's now out with injury until December. He was out with injury earlier on this season. Cavani has got under a year left on his Man United contract. It was back in May he signed that one-year contract extension. We've got Cavani on a free transfer. This season is Cavani's second full season at Man United. Uh, Cavani's got a good pedigree behind him. Look at the amount of silverware he won at PSG. Not only that, he was a long-serving player when he was at PSG. <coughs> Bruno Fernandes. He's also an exceptional player as well. Uh, Fernandez starts the vast majority of Man United's games and in a lot of games for Man United he's been consistent but on the other side of things there's been quite a few games where he's looked off the pace got to say Fernandez was very very poor against Man City last week and he looks very sloppy he looked lost for ideas and he gave the ball away a lot of times uh, since Fernandez come in, though, he's scored a lot of goals for the club and he's also provided a lot of assists. And he's got a lot of assists so far this season. Last season, Fernandez won Player of the Year and he's won Player of the Month quite a few times, reflecting on his good performances. Earlier on this season, Fernandez did make it clear that he wants to stay at Man United. When he first came to Man United, he said, I've come to Manchester to win trophies. We got him from Sport in Lisbon back in January 2020, and he's been a Manchester United player now for almost two years. One of the best signings, though, we've made since Fergie retired. You've obviously got Paul Pogba, that's a good player as well. Not only a good player, he's an imperative player. Pogba did enjoy a good start to the Premier League season, you know, so far this season in the league. Pogba's got seven assists and he produced good performances for Man United in the last couple of months of last season as well. Um, I recently give you the news on Paul Pogba, didn't I? Paul Pogba may never play for the club again. Uh, Pogba is out for around two months. 
because Pogba suffered a thigh injury in France training. And in January, Manchester United are prepared to sell Paul Pogba. Uh, Pogba's still got one game to serve in the league out of the three match ban he got. Uh, Pogba got sent off in the 5 0 defeat to Liverpool for a two footed challenge on Naibi Keita. Pogba did play in the 2-2 draw against Atalanta and he was very, very poor in that game. Reflecting on his poor performance, he got heavily criticised. Pogba has had a long-running transfer saga. His former club Juventus have been in for him. He enjoyed four good years with Juventus before he rejoined Man United. Uh, PSG have been in for him, Barcelona have been in for him. It said earlier on this season that he was offered to Barcelona. Inter Milan have been in for him before and Real Madrid have been relentlessly linked with him. For a while now, Pogba's agent, Mino Riola, has been working hard to get his client a move away from Man United. Uh, this season is Pogba's sixth season at the club since he rejoined. He's won three trophies at the club so far and Man United paid £89 million for him. So, reflecting on that, he's our most expensive signing at the moment. We had Pogba when he was a lot younger under the Ferguson era but had to let him go due to limited appearances. You know, Van der Beek, he's another good player Manchester United have got. But I haven't really had much of a perception on Van der Beek at Man United. Because Van der Beek doesn't get enough game time. And I've said Solskjaer needs to start Van der Beek, especially in the Premier League, because he is a very good player. So reflecting on Van der Beek's lack of game time, he's going to be leaving Man United in January. Uh, Van der Beek come on against Man City and he made an impact. He also came on in a 2-2 draw against Atalanta and made an impact. That just proves how good he is. Prior to the Liverpool game, Solskjaer did admit that Van der Beek is frustrated and disappointed over his situation at Old Trafford. And earlier on this season, it did mention that Van der Beek was furious with Solskjaer. Van der Beek has endured a difficult 19 months at Man United. This season is his second full season at the club. We got Van der Beek in a deal worth £40 million with add-ons included. And he's got a contract with Man United till 2025. There's an option of a further year and he's versatile. He can play in three different roles. You've got Luke Shaw, that's a good left back as well. But Luke Shaw has certainly not proven how good he can be this season because I've got to make an admission regarding Shaw. He's been abysmal this season. Um, he played in the 2-0 defeat to Man City and he was the main culprit for City's second goal by Bernardo Silva. I think Shaw's best game this season so far was the 3-0 win against Tottenham even though he did get booked in that game. But Shaw was far superior last season to how he has been so far this season. <coughs> you know. Uh, Shaw's now injured anyway. Came off injured against Man City. He is injury prone, which is a concern. Shaw's been at Manchester United for like seven and a half years now, so he's been a long-serving player and he's been our first-choice left-back for a while and he still remains our first-choice left-back despite the arrival of Tellez. You've got Tellez, that's a good player as well, but I think Tellez is leaving next year. Amon wan -Bissaka, he's a very good right-back. The defensive side of his game is superb. But the attacking side of his game is not so good. There is aspects of Am wan -Bissaka's game that's got to improve. He has got to show a lot more attacking intent. His positioning's got to improve. And I think his crossing's got to improve a bit more as well. But despite that, I still think he's one of the best right-backs we've had since Gary Neville. 
This season is Pesaka's third full season at Man United. We got him for 50 million from Crystal Palace back in the summer of 2019. And we've obviously got Eric Bailly. That's a very, very good centre half as well. But I think Bailly's going next year because Bailly doesn't get regular game time. Bailly lost his place in the team a while ago, obviously with the signing of the signing of Varane in the summer transfer window. And um, plus, for some reason, Solskjaer seems to prefer Lindelof ahead of Eric Bailly. I've got to say, Bay though, was abysmal against Man City last week. And um, their first goal came from an own goal by Bay, But it wasn't just the own goal. His overall performance was very poor. And I was shocked in that aspect because Bay played very well in the 2 all draw against Atalanta. And he did well against West Ham in the Cup earlier on this season. My element of concern about Bay is injury prone. Towards the end of last season, Bay signed a new contract to Man United till 2024. There's an option of a further year. You've got Raphael Varane. That's also a good centre-half as well. He's had quite a few good games for Man United, but there's also been a couple of games where he's looked off the pace. Uh, Varane is obviously not available now because he's got a hamstring injury. He's out for around a month. Not so long ago, Varane came back from a groin injury. Um, he was out with that groin injury for a few weeks. Varane initially made his return in the 3-0 win against Tottenham. What a good performance he did put out against Tottenham. Maguire, you know, he's a good centre-half when he wants to be, but he's been absolutely abysmal so far this season. Maguire's best game this season probably was the 3-0 win against Tottenham, despite him getting booked in that game. I think Maguire's performances have been worse since he come back from that calf injury. Solskjaer did rush Maguire back too soon. And obviously you've got De Gea, that's a very, very good goalkeeper as well. You've got to give De Gea a lot of credit, he's done really, really well so far this season. Don't forget De Gea reclaimed the number one spot back. So there you go. Good players. Uh, there's quite a few players that don't even get in the team at Man United. You know, Telez doesn't really get in there. Telez will only play when Shaw's not available. You know, Bay doesn't really get in there. Bay will only play if obviously we've got injuries to one or two centre-halves or obviously we play five at the back. Tom Eaton obviously doesn't get in there. We obviously brought Tom Eaton in as a backup anyway. Uh, Tom Eaton, though, did well in pre-season, didn't he, before the start of the Premier League season. Yeah, we got him on a free from Aston Villa. I think he did sign a two-year contract with Man United with an option of a further year. Henderson obviously doesn't get in the team now because obviously De Gea reclaimed that number one spot. Henderson wants a loan move away from Manchester United next year. Uh, Delot obviously doesn't really get in the team. Uh, Delot will only play when Anwan Basaka is not available. Delot is our backup right back. Matic gets in the team sometimes, but he doesn't get in the team on a regular basis. You know, Lingard is another one. He doesn't really get in the team. Martial doesn't get in the team much. Mata doesn't get in the team. Uh, Nomad Diallo, um, he doesn't get in the team either. So there you go. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always. And take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.